Those of us who adopted Adobe Lightroom early on in the piece and have subsequently built up vast catalogues of photographs will know that for the most part, Lightroom's built-in search sucks. Yes, you can narrow your searches down by utilizing the index metadata, and yes, you can search by location via embedded GPS coordinates, and yes, you can search for keywords, but it's all quite rudimentary, and most of it is reliant on manual data entry. Map search depends upon reliable embedded GPS data, Metadata often results in vague search returns and keywords must all be entered manually or via a third-party service. I've tested many third-party solutions to the Lightroom search problem, including automated AI keyword generation and aggregating meta-cataloging tools, all of which had their flaws. And now the German developers, Exire, have released the updated 2026 version of their AI-powered Lightroom search tool, which promises to plug once and for all the planet-sized holes in Lightroom's native search capabilities. It could be the solution we've all been waiting for, but it's going to cost you, Chief. little bit of housekeeping first and as always this video is not sponsored by XI or anyone else and I'm not a member of XI's affiliate scheme or indeed any affiliate scheme. I downloaded the 14-day trial version of this app which is fully functional in every way and if you like the look of it I suggest you do the same. If I later discover a mistake in my review I'll stick an update in the first pinned comment below. All right, let's get into it and talk about that price from the get-go, because as far as I'm concerned, it's actually the main flaw with the app. XR Search 2026 costs 200 US dollars, 305 Australian dollars, 200 Great British pounds, or 200 euros. And that's a slightly reduced introductory price, so expect it to go up in a couple of months. That's it a serious amount of dosh, and you have to be pretty serious about your search requirements to consider spending that much, especially considering that Mac users can get a two-year subscription to Peak2 Search for Lightroom by Syme for $89, US, which has fundamentally similar search capabilities. So now that we've got the sticker shock out of the way, let's talk features and functionality. XR Search is an app that you install separately to Lightroom, but which embeds itself within it using the plugin architecture. But before you can use its extended search capabilities, it needs to be initialized, which means indexing all of your photographs. They do warn you that this process could take some time, depending upon the age of your computer and the number of photographs that you have. During my testing, on my M2 MacBook Pro, I indexed 3,521 photos and it took nine minutes in total, which averages out at about six and a half photos a second. So if I was to index all 225,000 photographs in my collection, it would take around about nine hours and 22 minutes. The speed of indexing is in line with other apps with similar capabilities, actually a bit faster than most. And of course, that big Time-consuming initialization will only have to happen once, and subsequent additions will take only a couple of minutes. During that initialization, XI Search uses AI to analyze all of your photographs, to index them, and to enable search tools. In all, there are seven different search methods built into the app. Search by example photo, search by external sample photo, Search by keyword, faces, people, aesthetics, and text prompt. As far as I'm concerned, it's conversational text prompt searching that is the killer feature of third-party search tools like this one. Previously, only Peak2 and Peak2 Search by Syme have offered this capability, and they are Mac-only apps. So it was also the first thing I tested once I'd indexed my photographs. I used the search prompt, children playing on a beach at sunset, left the similarity limit at the default 40 and restricted the search returns to 230. 
but you can extend that limit to 5,000 if you want. At a setting of 40, there were far too many false positives in the list, but it nailed the sunset requirement along with the location, the beach. Dropping the similarity setting back to its most restrictive setting got me a near-perfect selection of photographs. I did wonder, however, if there were any cross-checks going on in terms of the last word in my prompt, namely sunset. So I changed the prompt to sunrise and got near-identical results. This would suggest it's guessing the time of day. My next text prompt was aerial view of a waterfall, and XR struggled badly on this, even at the most restrictive similarity setting. Of the 210 photos it found, only 13 were actually waterfalls. Most were coastal rocks, beaches, or just rocky outcrops in national parks. Waterfalls are fairly distinctive features, and I found it surprising that XR's machine learning struggled so badly on such a basic word. So I cross-referenced it with Pig2 Search, and while it also had a very high percentage of false positives, it managed a strike rate of just over 40%, as opposed to XI's 6%. The prompt, flying birds on a sunny day, was a far better result with near-perfect search returns. My request for a female wearing red shoes produced one test result, which was this. I have no idea if I actually have any photos of females wearing red shoes in my catalogue or if this is a female bird, but I found it pretty amusing. I tested a whole batch of random text prompts and would class XI's efforts as good, but not extraordinary. I cross-referenced them all against Pig2 Search, and I would say that Pig2 definitely had the edge, scoring much more accurate results in most test cases. If I have one main complaint about XI's text search, it's that it struggles with the nuances. If I search for lone tree on a hillside, I don't expect to see heavily forested mountains. The face and people search options sound like they're similar things, but actually, faces is a completely open-ended search for specific types of face, i.e. adult, smiling, female, whereas People Search enables you to open a photograph and use it as a reference image to find more photographs of that same person. The People Search is therefore of far more use since it saves going through the usually arduous process of facial recognition. You can filter the People Searches further by keywords, face properties, or face count. I found it to be both accurate and useful. If you know what you're looking for, but not sure how to describe it, then the example search is a useful tool. You supply it with a sample photo, either one that's in Lightroom's catalog already or an external image you can supply, and it will search based on content or color. I had mixed results with this one and found it did far better when there was a super obvious subject, such as someone on horseback, as opposed to something a bit more general, such as a colourful sunset. Ticking the colour option was surprisingly impressive, with the app successfully indexing colour combinations in a photo. I imagine this would be very useful if you were trying to match up a theme. The last two main search options are aesthetics and duplicates. There's a similar aesthetic search option in Peak 2 for Mac, and I found it as singularly pointless in that app as I do in Xire. I have no idea what rule set it's using to pick out the most aesthetic images, but the results seem fairly random to me, and I have no idea what practical use this feature serves beyond novelty value. Duplicates works well and can be configured to only search for exact matches so that you're not picking up on special edits or crops. I must admit that I am confused by XI's keyword search and question its usefulness. It works by generating its own keywords during the initialization process, and these are independent of whatever keywords are already in the photo's metadata. The keywords are stored in XI's own library and are not added to Lightroom unless you specifically do so using its built-in batch transfer tool, which is all well and good, but the keywords that it generates are far too vague to be of much use. 
They're a big improvement on the 2025 version, but that's not hard because that was absolutely shite. To search on keywords, you filter down through a hierarchical list such as nature, beach, or animal, bird, seagull. If XI didn't add the specific keyword you want to search on, tough shit. Furthermore, these search returns, even with that limited subset of keywords, weren't great on most of my tests. For instance, a search on animals, marine animal, dolphin, got me three seagulls, eight dolphins, and 14 seals. We have a big new feature in XI Search in this 2026 release is an automated culling system that uses AI to identify flawed photographs or to automatically group by people, content, visual similarity, or date, and to add markers to those photographs for simple approval or rejection. This is, of course, going to be of most interest to professional photographers shooting weddings or events and is of no use whatsoever to me as a landscape photographer. The process of producing those special groups is quick and simple. I ran a test on a folder of 2,000 photographs taken at a local rural show and analysed them all in about five minutes. Photographs were placed in subfolders within the XI search collection by Capture Date content, people, sequences, and visual similarity. It did a good job of identifying people in my testing, grouping them all together in discrete selections, ditto sequences, and visual similarity. Since Capture One has far more advanced built in culling compared to Lightroom, I imagine this feature in XI Search will be of great interest to studio photographers using the Adobe Suite. Let me state right off the bat that XI have definitely lifted their game with this 2026 release of their Lightroom search tool. They've clearly gone back to the machine learning training data or greatly expanded their data set or both because the conversational text prompt searching is far better in this release than the old version. And it's that text-based search that is without a doubt the most useful and the most powerful feature in the app. Conversational search is awesome, firstly, because it doesn't require any preparation on the part of the photographer, and secondly, because it liberates your entire photo catalog from the tyranny of indexing. Instead of laboriously entering keywords, or let's be realistic, never entering any keywords, or doing any prep work at all, you can find pretty much any photo you can describe. XI's text search is still nowhere near as good as the Mac-only options from French developer Syme, but they are vastly better than last year. And of course, once you have a subset of images, the search returns from your conversational text prompt, you can save them as a manual collection and then further refine your search using any of Lightroom's built-in search or filtering options. Importantly, searches themselves are fast, fast enough that you won't stress about doing them fast enough that you won't start the search going and then go and get yourself a coffee and a Kit Kat. I would definitely not bother ever lifting the similarity limit above the most restrictive setting. You're just deliberately generating false positives. The other search tools work well, though I struggle to understand the usefulness of the Faces tool. People Search is genuinely useful, though, and provided accurate search returns in all of my tests. Example searching, whether using existing photos in Lightroom or some externally supplied ones was average at best, but the color-based matching was genuinely excellent. Aesthetic search is a waste of time, a feature you'll use precisely once and never access again. Keyword searching was nearly as big a letdown as last year's XI apps, but the best I can say about it is that it narrows down your search returns from an entire city to just a suburb. The culling tool is powerful, and if you never disconnect your camera from a laptop, then I imagine it would be a useful feature to have in your toolbox. With the hefty price tag attached to this app, over 300 bucks here in Australia, it's pretty clear that this is a product being pitched at professionals and only the most serious of hobbyists. That said, if I was a Windows user and had no access to peak to superior Mac-only search tools, I would still consider buying it. 
even with the high volume of false positives generated by the machine learning algorithm in this app, typing a text prompt like sunset beach with pink and deep orange tones sure as shit beats manually scrolling through massive libraries doing the same. I'm not a fan of XI's interface, and I think the actual XI search app is ugly and pointless. You can accomplish everything from the plugin extra subfolder within Lightroom, and I see no reason to access a third-party app for this. The text prompting is greatly improved over last year's release, but it's still nowhere near as effective as XI's marketing would have you believe. Best results are gained from precise and verbose text searches and the similarity limit set to its most restrictive setting. Keyword search has improved too, but it's still too limited to be of anything other than general use for wide-ranging search terms. If you're in the market for AI text searches across Lightroom catalogs and culling is of no interest to you and you're on a Mac, then I'd opt for Peak 2 Search. XI Search is an improving product that provides a useful layer of search capabilities on Adobe Lightroom Classic's creaking infrastructure, but its price point makes it unlikely to be adopted by hobbyists. And that'll do us for this look at XI Search 2026. Do you use any third-party search or metadata tools in Adobe Lightroom? Do let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you got value from it, then do consider subscribing to my channel for more photo, video, and drone-related content from me. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.